there's something here. Can you read that? I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, one of the games is that I've, I've never be I've never come to the youth service in this church. Well, I'm happy to be here with you. I've interacted with some of you, some are new forces faces, uh, but we will come to know you. Today we are going to read, we have been read from the book of Mark, chapter 7, and our theme for this chapter is Go in Purity. Let's say Go in Purity. Go in Purity. Think when the word purity comes into your mind. Sharon, what comes into your mind when you hear the word purity? Don't tell me it's the name of a person. Uh, abstinence. Yeah? Abstinence. Sharon says it's abstinence. Anyone else? Anyone? There is no wrong or right answer. Because we are going to talk about purity. I know this is something you've heard again and again. And uh, <clears throat> So the Gospel of Mark chapter 7, uh, just giving you an outline, I'm going to talk about three things, if time is allowed. But we're going to see how Jesus came into the scene and he found people doing certain things. In fact, the song we were supposed to play is a new song sung by one of my favorite artists from Tanzania. It's all today is it's three days new today, and it's it's a it has a video, a nice video, just playing how Jesus came, even though it's in Swahili, and he found people they were doing certain things we call them traditions. So Jesus came, he found people, they were doing their own thing, and then he introduced this new thing, and uh, whenever a new change is not easy, in fact people resist change. So we are going to see several characters, we are going to see Jesus, we are going to see some people called the Pharisees, Pharisees are people who could see far, yeah, Pharisees. Then we had also those who are called the Sadducees. This was the people were always sad, yeah? Uh, so, Listen to the song. I wish you, you would have seen it video, but listen to the song. It's called Alikuta Ibadam. Come on, me, I'm not funny, 
to do so when Jesus came he found people they were doing what he called traditions and he came and tried to help the people to come to, to know the truth about God's words and uh, teaching them not to rely so much on the traditions and the laws that Moses had given them but to embrace what God had done for them a family of three, consisting of a father, a mother, a family of five, and three siblings, came to church one Sunday. They worshipped God, they listened to the message. After the service, they got into their nice car, and as they were driving on, the father was heard complaining. The worship was not good. We were pastor, we were Billy, uh, he didn't preach well. Yeah, so he was complaining along the way. And then they went to a place, a joint, to have lunch. And he started complaining again. The lunch, eh? this, uh, when the lunch came, the food is not good. And then when lunch came, he prayed. So he prayed, and they said, Amen. And then, after they had finished praying, one of the sons asked, Dad, when you prayed, did God hear your prayers? Which prayers? When you pray, when you are complaining and whining after church, did God hear what you are saying? When you prayed for the food, did God... Uh, 
Had did God hear your prayers for the food? The father said, Yes, I I know he, he did. He heard me. And then uh, the son uh, the boy asked, uh, Do you, which one do you believe God had? The complaining and the whining or the play, uh, praying for the food? If you are God, which prayer would you have had? And the father was, hmm? In our church, we find different kind of people. And in the Bible, in Mark chapter 7, we call them hypocrites. There are people who come to church, they pretend to be this, but out there, they are different. That was, that was what, what used to, used to happen. In, the, in Mark chapter 7. They were pretending to be this, but out there, they are different person, people. And that's what happened. The dad, when he was in church, was complaining and whining. When they went for lunch, he pretended to be a godly person, praying for the food. And that's why the son asked, which one did God believe when they pray? In the book of Mark chapter 7, the word hypocrite, we see hypocrite. The word hypocrite is an old Greek word. Most of the word, for example, the Bible was written, was written we have what you call the Hebrew Bible. If, if, how many of you have been to Israel? Mutaenda ivi karibuni. Sindio? Amen. When you go to Israel, don't tell them the Old Testament. Tell them the Hebrew Bible. Because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew the language of the people at that time. The New Testament was written in Greek, what was called Koinone Greek. It was not really the Greek that we know, the original Greek, but it was like Shen, yeah? Anyone could get it. So the New Testament was written in Greek, in Greek. So, and we draw many words from the Greek language. So the word hypocrite comes from the Greek language. It is used to and in those days, it was a nice word. It, it was used with actors. Yeah? Those days, before easy technology, actors would carry a mask attached to a, to a stick. So if they wanted to play certain characters, wanna put on their, that mask. So and they started calling them hypocriticals. They were called hypocriticals. And from that word, the word, we have the word what is called hypocrite. The word one who wears a mask. It means one who wears a mask. And today we can apply the same that a hypocrite is somebody who wears a, a mask, a fake one indeed. Una pretend evil, but kumbe ume, ume put on a mask. What we call plastic mask. So the word was used to refer to people who pretend to be one thing in one moment and another thing in another situation. And I've heard parents complaining about you young people. Have you ever had issues happening at the universities, at our college? And then something may be bad, somebody is killed. Halafu mzazi anasema, huyo mtoto wangu alikuwa mzuri. Eh? Alikuwa mzuri. But the, the parents don't know that our young people they put on different masks. When they are at home, they play a different character. When they are in church, they play a different character. When they are in college, a very totally different character. Is that true? Those of you for campus, Cindy? Yes, so parents will say, when you are the when you home, when you are in church, but out there, totally different. People. If you meet them, you will be surprised, you will be shocked of what happened. So I forget is someone who pretends to be something else, something, and yet they act to be something else. Do you have I forget in the church? I've shared about a family that they pretended to come to church, but they were complaining and arguing. So there are many, there are, I will not say many, there are few I pockets in the church. They pretend to be something, but out there, they are totally different kind of people. So the text today will go, will go to show us about some hypocrites and we are going to see these two words. Clean hands and clean hearts. 
And the first point that I want to share with us uh, from the Mark chapter 7 verse 1 to 5, we are going to see the problem that was there at that time and how Jesus confronted the problem. Let us read verse 1 to 5 of Mark chapter 7. Of course, Brian read, read nicely for us that says, the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from where? I want you to note where they came from. From Jerusalem, yeah? They had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, saw some of the disciples eating food with hands that was unclean. Hands that were unclean. And uh, that is unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial, a ceremonial washing holding to the tradition of the elders. Verse 4 says, when they came from the market, they do not eat unless they wash their hands. And they observe many other traditions, such as washing of the cups, of the kettle, and many other things. So that is the problem that was there. Jesus, of course, when Jesus, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is in Nazareth, in his hometown. And they, when he, he came, with, they were working with his disciples, and the, the Pharisees saw the disciples eating without washing their hands. There were many traditions that the Pharisees had laid upon the people, and they were burdensome. You could not eat without washing your hand. And the washing of the hand was not washing so that your hand would be clean. No, it was just a ritual. So there were many rituals that they used to do. It was so the Pharisees came and say, why aren't your disciples washing your hands as according to the tradition of the elders? What did Jesus do? And there were many other rituals. For example, on the Sabbath, if you needed to, you are not supposed to look on the mirror. How many of you this morning? According to the Sabbath, to the, to the commandments. Of course, these were traditions. In the Old Testament, there were the laws of Moses, and then there were other traditions that were written in a book called Mishnah. And you will find also with the Muslims. You know the Muslims, they copied from the Bible. Muhammad used to, was a, was a business person. He got, he got married to a lady called Adija, who was, who was 25 years older than him. And uh, Muhammad was an orphan. He was raised up by an uncle. So when Muhammad made Khadija, who was very famous in a business, they used to have what you call caravans, mono caravans. So they would travel from Mecca to Jerusalem. Wakenda wakiuza mafuta, sukari. Yeah, if you go to Northeastern, you will see what used to happen. So Khadija was 25 years older than Muhammad. So Muhammad wanted to marry Khadija. And uh, the uncle said, no, you cannot marry somebody who is 25 years older than you who had been divorced four times. Four times. Khadija had been divorced four times. And in Islam, to divorce somebody is very easy. Many Muslim women, when their husband call, they are so scared because they don't know what they are going to say. They might call and say, talaka, talaka, talaka and you are divorced like that, just like that. So, Muhammad's uncle refused him to marry Khadija. So what happened? Khadija's uncle was a pastor, the biggest church in Mecca those days. There was the biggest church in Mecca. So the uncle said, it's okay, I'll marry you. Yeah? I'll marry you, Muhammad and Khadija. So Muhammad was married in a church, the biggest church in Mecca those days. It was called the uh, uh, Ebonite Church. I want you to Google later on about the Ebonite Church. So Muhammad got married in the, that church, married by this pastor. Khadija's uncle was a pastor in that big church. But the problem with this church was they, they did not believe Jesus was the Son of God. So do you know where Muslims got their teachings from that? So Muhammad must have read the Gospel of Mark, because this pastor must have translated it in Arabic, the Luke, the Gospel of Luke. That's why if you read Islam, you will see some similarities with the Jewish culture. So, in this, uh, the, the Jewish had another 
book called Mishnah, which outlines the traditions. And even in Muslims, they have also those traditions. Yeah. For example, one of the Muslim tradition is that they saw Muhammad eating, and after he finished, he licked his fingers. So in Islam, you're supposed after eating, you're supposed to lick your fingers. It was a tradition. And for the Jewish, for the Pharisees, you could not look at the mirror in the morning because you would see a grey hair. What would happen if you have a grey hair? You will be tempted to do what? Kuingoa. Now to remove it, that is work. You have already done work. <laughs> Another tradition is that if you, if, you, if you knew on the Sabbath, you will walk to a certain distance, you are supposed to prepare for that. So you tie a rope to your house and tie that rope to your, on your body and make that rope as long as where you are supposed to go. So if you have to go up to the gate of the church, you will finger your camber, now make sure it's a fikisha wapi, because you keep it in your gate, you have worked and you have broken the law. There was a way they were washing their cups, yeah? And these days if you go to the mosque, you see the Muslim washing their hands, washing their feet before they enter into uh, the mosque for prayers. So that was happening. And th that's why when Jesus came, they asked the disciples, why aren't your disciples washing your hands according to the tradition of the elders? So what did Jesus reply? The word fault, they found fault with the disciples, and the word fault means to place blame. They place blame to Jesus and also to his disciples. They brought the problem to light, and Mark narrates about that problem in Mark chapter in verse 3 and verse 4. And we have seen verse 3 says what? Verse 3 says, The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. They were not washing it to be clean. The way you go there with soap and wash your hand so that you can eat. But it was not just a ceremony. And do you know how they used to wash their hands? You were supposed to, to point your fingers up like this, and then you just pour water. Like that. And then you're supposed again to put your finger down and you pour. That was the ritual of washing the hand. Will that would make you clean, your hands clean. That was the ritual. So Jesus came and confronted the tradition. This washing had nothing to do with cleaning the hands. It was just a, cere a ceremonial. It was just a ceremony. You've seen the, our soldiers, whenever there is a, a, a ceremony, an holiday, they put on their uniform, it's called ceremonial. The uniform they put on is called ceremonial. They don't put it any other time, but they put it wherever there is. So that uniform doesn't have any meaning. It cannot help them. They cannot put it to go to war or to do their patrols. But whenever there is a ceremony like Uru Park, wherever, they will put on that one. So it's just a ritual of putting clothes. And according to Mark, they not only had rules about their hands, but they had their other elaborate rules, completion of Jewish royal uh, oral laws that were made. They had over 35 pages of instruction devoted on how to do certain ceremonies. Even praying. Whenever they prayed, you pray facing the holy city. Which is the holy city? Which is the holy city of God? I'm doing Jerusalem. So the Jews, whenever they will pray, they will pray facing Jerusalem. What about the Muslim? Muhammad saw that. He said, if you are a Muslim, when you pray, you face where? Mecca. First Mecca, yeah? So Muslim, they copied from the Jewish culture. So they had all those rules. So what happened? The problem is that they were, these rules and tradition were not from God. They were man-made traditions, yeah? You, can you remember of any tradition that man has come up with that has no meaning, that has no purpose, even if you do them, 
they don't make any sense. Can you mention one of them that you know? Nicole, which one do you know? For the Jewish, they used to say tradition is a fence around the law. Eh? The tradition was the fence. For example, if you were to put a fence around this sanctuary, which one would be more important? Is it the sanctuary or the fence? For the Pharisees, it was the fence. The fence was so important that what happened inside this sanctuary. So for them, the traditions were the fence around the law. So you need to, to follow the fence more than what the law said. I've, I've told you about where looking into the mirror was forbidden because you will be tempted to work. How many of you are forced to teeth? If you had forced teeth, you are not supposed to remove it. Because if you did that, you are working and you have broken the law. They also had other traditions of carrying an handkerchief. You know how many of you have an handkerchief? I'm a squeeze to me and handkerchief. I don't have. You have. You may break the law. Where is your handkerchief? You have it in your pocket. For the Jews, for the Pharisees, if you had an handkerchief and you are on upstairs and you need to blow your nose, you needed you do, you, are, you needed to tie your handkerchief to your shoulder. Hapa, we forget hapa. And if you need to blow your nose, you needed to come from upstairs. You know, in Israel, the houses on Asian Yubas are due with flat roofs. Yeah. So you need to come down. Yo, upanguze makamasi. you you have broken the law. If you carry the handkerchief in your hand, umefanya kazi, na ume break the law. So you need to tie it on your shoulder. Eh? How many of you can do that? Those, those are some of the laws that they used to do. So on the Sabbath, you are not supposed to carry an handkerchief. You needed to tie it around your neck, walk downstairs, and tie, and then blow your nose, return it, and go upstairs. So, so those are some of the traditions that they, they used to do. Do we have Pharisees with us today? My you are a Pharisee. Eh? 6 verse 12, the Bible says, All things are lawful unto men, but not all things are beneficial. All things, the Bible says, all things are lawful. You can do them, but they are not beneficial. They don't benefit us. The, washing, the ritual of washing the hands for the disciples of Jesus was necessary but it was not beneficial because it could not make their hands clean. Another scripture is 1 Corinthians 10, 23. All things are lawful for me but all things are not beneficial. All laws are, bene are lawful for me but all things do not edify. So when it comes to issues of tradition and laws and regulation, you need to ask yourself. Yes, it is. The Bible says there are Lawful, but they are not beneficial. They are lawful, but they don't edify me. The washing of the hands, how will it draw me closer to God? Not to be clean. Yeah? And then 1 Corinthians 8.13 Therefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no meat, lest I make my brother to be offended. For example, the pagans, especially if you go to the book like Corinthians, the book of Corinthians, they were the pagans. We are, we are the Jewish people who are God's chosen people, Israel, and we are any other person who is not part of Israel was a pagan. So where do we put ourselves? Are we Jewish? We are pagans. So for a Jew, Akija we are pagans. We are outside the, the, command, uh, the promises of God. That's what, what they will do for us. So yeah, the Bible is saying that. And in the pagan, before they, when they slaughtered a meat, like a goat, a cow, they would take it to the temple. They would slaughter at the slaughterhouse, take that meat to the temple, offer it to idols, 
and then they would bring it to the market for sale. That's what they used to do. Like the Indians, they have so many gods. There are over 200 gods. So which god would you offer your sacrifice to? So that's why Paul, when, when pagan people become, started becoming Christians, the, the Jews were told, do not eat meat that will offend your brother. Because for, for, for a pagan believer, they knew meat was offered to idols first, then it will be served to the people. But the Bible says, we are going to see that, are all food clean? Are we permitted to eat all the food that God has given? So we see Jesus came and confronted that problem, those traditions of the law. Uh, because the Bible says, uh, the Bible says, verse 6, verse 5 and 6, So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders, instead of eating their food with unclean hands? Listen to Jesus. Verse 6, Jesus replied, Isaiah, prophet Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, I procreate, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but with their hearts, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but truths taught by men. So Jesus confronted the problem. They say even prophet Isaiah, over 800 years ago, prophesied about you, that you are hypocrites, that you lay burdens, you give people burdens that they could not even carry. There were so many regulations. The Pharisees used to wash the cup outside, but the inside, they will use it when it is dirty. So they were putting, they were giving people problems. So we have seen the problem was confronted by Jesus. Number two, the problem, the problem was condemned. Those traditions were condemned. So we see these men were upset because Jesus' disciples did not perform the ritual of washing the hands according to the Jews' tradition. In verse 6 and 9, we see Jesus condemning the problem that was there. Let's read verse 6 to 9. So we have already read verse 6. Verse 8 says, You have to let go of the commands of God and are holding to the traditions of men. Verse 9, He said to them, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. One of the other traditions that they used to do, according to verse 9, Verse 10, for example, verse 10 says, For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. That's a command. We young people, we are supposed to honor our parents. In fact, in Ephesians, the Bible says, It is the only command that comes with a promise. If you honor your parents, you will live long, long. But what is happening today? Parents are burying their young ones. I've buried many young people at the prime of their life. What is happening with young people? Maybe they are not honoring their parents. I want to encourage you today, honor your parents, no matter how bad they are, no matter how they have mistreated you, no matter what they have said about you, it is a command from God and it has a promise. If you want to live long, do what? Honor your father and mother. And if you have an issue with your parents, please call them today. Say, Dad, I'm sorry. Even if you, even if the mistake is not yours, I'm sending you. Call them. Say, Dad, I'm sorry. I want us to make up. Yeah, because the Bible says, honor your parents, honor your father and mother, from the commandment of God, also in the New Testament. So the the Pharisees came with another law. Children are supposed to support their parents. Is that true? How many of you are working? to my to your dad or to your mom. You need to do that, yeah? So children are supposed to support their parents. But the Pharisees came with another law called Korban. In the Jewish culture it was called Korban. This one means that this whatever you are supposed to give to your parents, if you say the word Korban, you are saying I have dedicated this money, this thing I was supposed to give to my parents. To God. It was a, a way of excuse of not supporting your parents. 
That's why verse, let's read and listen. Let's continue reading. We have read verse 10 says, Only your father and your mother, anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. The law of Moses said, if you curse your father, you are supposed to be stoned to death. You remember that woman who was caught in adultery? She was supposed to be stoned to death. In Sudan, they used what called the Sharia law. It's just the same like the law of Moses. If you are caught stealing, but for the for Sudan, if you are sto- caught stealing, they cut this part of your arm. Wanna cut up? If they caught you again stealing, wanna cut up? The next part. Like that. If you continue stealing, they keep on cutting. That's the Sharia law. Yeah? They stole you to death. So the Pharisees were telling children, don't support. If you don't know, if you want to find an easy way of not supporting your parent, just do what? Just let's read and hear. But if you say that, yeah, verse 11, but if you say that, but if, but you say that if a man says to his father or mother, whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is korban. That is now the, another ritual. That is a gift devoted to God. Then you no longer let him do anything for his mother and father. So the Pharisees were going to young people say, just say korban. And that one will release you from supporting your parent. Is it a good thing not to support our parents? God expects us. That's another way of honoring our parents. So Jesus came and condemned that tradition. He said, why are you telling children not to support their parents? They are supposed to support their parents. He said it's like they are a gift dedicated to God, which was not true. The Pharisees wanted to take that money. Because that money, you are supposed to take it to the Pharisees. And they do it whatever they wanted to do with that whatever thing money food then they will take it then will, your parents will die in fact in, in Timothy I can't remember which chapter the Bible says if any man cannot provide for his own family he is worse than a pagan an unbeliever you are worse than an unbeliever if you cannot suppose your parents your relatives your brothers especially your immediate family, you are worse than unbeliever. You are treated like you are not even born again. So if you are here, God has given you some job, no matter how small it is, to manga kitu to your parents. Sidio, Mpesa, something, and you receive the blessings. In our family, you are three brothers. I am the last born. So when I was growing up, our first born was my, uh, my dad's favorite. Huh? Always mesky of so and so my dad's called Isaac. So my dad will talk about Isaac, the good things he has done. And then something happened in the course of their relationship. So the father was not talking anymore about Isaac. <laughs> because something happened, Sidio. Then I became the favorite of the dad. Because I started helping my dad. I read the Bible. I, one time he was very sick. I was here in Nairobi. I brought him to Nairobi. I had him treated. He went back home. I used to support him. So I became the favorite of my dad. So all the secrets that my dad had about his property, about his documents, he gave them to me. Even though my dad is uh, passed on, I have all his documents. I have his driving license from the 1950s. Have you seen a driving license from the 1950s? I have his insurance cover. They used to get it from South Africa. Big! Eh? Big like this, yeah? Piece of paper. I don't know you're eh? happy. Today we have F4, A5. You need 10. Eh? I have them. I have all these documents. Because he trusted me with them. Because I started doing blessing my father, my dad. Eh? My mom had already died. In verse 8, he tells them that they have laid aside the commands of God. I've told you, that for the Pharisees, the traditions were the fence around the law. The traditions were the fence around the word of God. So they set aside the word of God and they started following traditions. They will find you on the way. He said, why? Why are you dressed like this? 
why are you talking like this? Why are you doing this and this? The Pharisees were following what you call legalistic. They were legalistics. Eh? They were sharia to laws after laws. And they were coming up with more laws and more laws. And they were they teach the people that the way to be right with God is to keep the all is to keep the laws and the rules. By the way, in the Old Testament, under the law of Moses, what you call the Mosaic law, if you are to keep all the laws of Moses, 100% you will go to heaven. All of them. But how many of you can keep even one? Jesus said, even if you, you break one of them, you have sinned. You have broken all of them. So it was very hard for somebody to keep the law of Moses. God needed to do something so that we can be able to to come back to God. So they were, they, they think their little pretty rules are more important than anything else, even than the word of God. So that was a problem. So we, Jesus, we see Jesus confronted and condemned the, 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 the laws that they were putting at the uh, people. Jesus talked about the practice of Coban, just setting a gift for God instead of helping your parents. And Jesus, what did Jesus say? The word Coban means a gift offered to God. The command of God are very clear. God said in the fifth commandment, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which God has given you. Exodus 20, 12. It was there in the commandment. But now they are telling children, just set your gift aside, give it to the Pharisees, and then your parents, if they ask why you are not supporting them, you said I dedicated my gift to God, which was which was not true. Verse 13. In verse 13, let's read verse 13. We see another, we see another problem there. Mark 7, 13. Verse 13 says, Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. They used to nullify the word of God by their traditions. So Jesus condemn that problem. Number three, the last point, Jesus now is giving us a clarification. Don't listen to the Pharisees. Don't follow their laws. But this is the alternative that pleases God. What is the alternative? Verse 14 to verse 23. Let me read verse 14. This is the healing of a man with the evil spirit. Even healing was a problem. Verse 14 says, okay, sorry, I'm in verse, I'm in chapter 9. Verse 14 says, again, Jesus called the crowd and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. Which food is clean. How many, of, how many of you can eat all kind of food that is presented before you? Or which one do you don't eat? Is there anyone here who has a problem with certain kind of food? In the Old Testament, they were, they were forbidden to eat certain kind of food. For example, any animal. Brad, you may tell me you can eat baby. Any animal in your equina, those come by a ngombe, you are not supposed to eat. That's according to the Old Testament. You are not supposed to eat. Any animals that crawl on the ground, you are not supposed to eat. But when Jesus came, by the even the disciples, they were not supposed to pick wheat on the way and eat. It was not allowed. But the Pharisees focus more on the washing of the hands. So in the Old Testament, they were forbidden. There were certain forbidden things that were not supposed to eat. Even the Jewish, when Peter, uh, Peter went to another to, a, to another Gentile home and he was given food, and he said, "No, we are not supposed to eat this food." But he received a dream, and he saw God a plate of food. Imagine a plate of food coming down from heaven, like a shuka. 
in his dream and the God told him, eat. He said, no, these are forbidden. And God told Peter, do not call what is clean and clean. Today we are supposed to eat all kind of food unless you have an health issue. So, eh, all of them you are supposed to eat. It's you are supposed to eat Sharon. Which one you don't? Does, uh, which one do you, you don't? You don't like to eat? Eh? Matumbo. <laughs> you are supposed to eat. Listen to what Jesus said. These are the words of Jesus. In my Bible, it's written in red. In red. The I'm kind of blind, but I see this is red. Yeah. He said to Jesus, Mark seven fourteen. Listen to me, Jesus is saying, anyone, Sharon, and understand this, verse 15, nothing outside ways you could get corona, or it could enter into your body. Number one, it could go through your nose. That's why you are supposed to cover a mask, or our eyes, or our mouth. Those are the three ways, or touching. So, and doctors used to say, if you get corona, and it goes into your nose, pray that it doesn't go into your lung. Because in our nostril, there are two pipes. One goes to the lung, that's why you breathe, yeah? And the other one goes to the stomach. So we used to pray that let corona go to your stomach. And if you are eating good food, if your stomach is alkaline, that one will deal with corona. It will not affect you so much. Don't go to now, oh my dog, oh, you'll be okay. But if it enters your lung, what will happen? Die. You will die. Yeah? Because the corona used to eat the lungs, yeah? In fact, doctors were not allowed to do a post-mortem on a person who had died of corona. But some South American countries, when it changed out of the corona, they wanted to see what happens to the lung. Yeah? Yes. So anything that goes into your mouth, into your through your mouth to your stomach, is clean. Even in nyoka. How many of you eat snake? Sharo, you call when you metuambi you pull a snake. Eh? So we say you pet a snake. Yeah? I have eaten snake meat. Even all of you, you have eaten snake meat. But you didn't know. This is my hotel. Some of them are snake. Donkey meat. How many of you can eat donkey meat? Very, very yum yum. I've eaten donkey meat. I've eaten camel meat. I've eaten snake. I've eaten frog. I've eaten. A, what do you call it? What is that? Chameleon. Yeah? And they are very nice. Yeah? The Chinese, they eat all of those. So long as it goes to the stomach, Jesus said it is clean. Sindio? Yeah. How many eat pork? How many of you eat pork? Muslim, they don't eat pork. If you live near Muslim, Muktaku Fukuza, they book a ranga pork up of water at home. So, Jesus said it's clean. Clean hands, clean at. And I will be. I want you to remember those things because we are going to list them there. We are going to see clean hands. What are some of the characteristics of clean hands? What about the clean heart? So the Bible says in verse twenty, uh, verse seventeen, the disciples were confused, eh? and they asked Jesus about what this parable means. In verse twenty, Jesus revealed that the spiritual defilement is always as a result of a defiled heart. Now the problem. Defilement comes from the heart, come from the inside. And the Bible says the heart, man's heart is the most deceitful, yeah? the most cunning, the heart of man. The heart of man will tell me, I will do this for you tomorrow. It's the most wicked. So anything that goes into your heart, when you eat your food, make sure it doesn't go into your heart. Where is the heart? Up in my doctor, is it on the left or on the right? What you feel your heart beat young? So when you eat any kind of food, don't allow it to go to your heart. Allow it to go to the stomach because it will be passed out. 
mwili itachukua the nutrients inataka the other one will do what will go out so in verse 20 the disciples were told the Pharisees only emphasize on keeping external rules they were external rules but they did not tell people about their spiritual conditions yeah their heart can only be changed and spiritual defilement can be cleansed away only by the, a new birth. The only thing that can wash our hearts is the new birth. What is the new birth? The only person who can cleanse our heart is Jesus. Not any kind of food. Not, kind, not kind, any kind of ritual. After your baptism, baptism is a ritual. But it has a significant, a very important significant. How many of you have been baptized here? None of you. Sharon, 3%, 4% of the youth service were before baptized. And Pasirina has been advertising how many adults need to be baptized. Even because it is a very significant. Baptism means, when you are baptized, it means something has already happened in your heart, in your life. And now you are showing it publicly because when you are dipped into the water, you do what? You are dying with Christ. When you come out, you are resurrecting with Jesus Christ. It means you, you have died. And one of these days, you are going to be resurrected. Don't be like the Crusaders. Have you heard about the Crusaders? Hey, Nina Musomi Church history. In the, the early 18th century, there are some Christians who, had, who came up with zeal and vigor and they wanted to fight and to conquer the world for Jesus. So what did they do? Before they were sent out and they went to North Africa. Those of you who know your geography, history, who, what kind of people live in North Africa? Nikinanani wanaishi in North Africa. Are they Christians? They are? Yes, North Africa is majority, 100% Muslim. So these crusaders, when they say, we want to go to North Africa and make every Muslim a Christian. And before they were to go for that, it was called a crusade. Have you seen people going for crusade? They were to be baptized. So the crusaders would come before the pastor, they came with their sword. They conquered with the sword. When they were being baptized, Wakikua dipped into their Maji, they lifted up out of the sword. They say, I'm dying for Jesus, but my sword is not dying for Jesus because I will use it to kill people for God. That's what they did. Well, they raised their sword up, uh, outside, uh, out. They didn't put it inside the water, but their body was dipped into the water, but sword kabaki do. Kasema, my body for Jesus, but my sword for killing Muslims. They went to North Africa. They killed people. Do you know all of North Africa were, was Christians? By force. Thanks to the Crusaders. They became Christians. But what happened when you force somebody to do something they don't want? A few days, they will go back to their way of life, to their religion. So I want us in verse 20, those who have the Bible, because in verse 23, 21 to 23, and Brian, when he notified time, Yes. So in verse 21 to 23 of Mark 7, Jesus gave a partial list of the attitudes and actions that cause defilement. And I want you to help me. And Jesus said that these are the things that make us unclean in the sight of God. So the things we are going to list there are the things that make people to be defiled. And uh, breaking the rules will make us to be defiled. And I want us to see some of these rules. How, how many, those who have their Bibles, maybe in your gadget, go to Mark chapter uh, verse 21. And in Mark 7, 21. And I want you to list for me the things that are list, I mentioned there. Where is Macomb? I have his Bible here. Yeah. Uh, who has found Mark 21, verse 21? This is very important because these are the things that make us to be defiled. Mark, uh, Mark 21. The Bible says, From within, out of men's heart, come 
What is the thing you see there? So it says sexual? Yeah. So let's sexual. So that one defines a man before God. Another one? Yeah? Theft. Theft. So if you are a thief, that one defines you. <coughs> Another one? Yeah? Murder. Okay, murder somebody, you are taking somebody's life. Issues of life uh, and death are in the hands of God. Another one? What's the difference? What's the difference between that? Hmm? Another one? What? <coughs> greed. At a greed, defile somebody. Huh? Not human, it's a man. That one defines. Another one? Malice. Malice. Huh? Malice. Any other one? Jealousy. Huh? But the Bible says God is a jealous God. Huh? Well, our God is a jealous God. Another one? Pride. Pride. Pride me. That's pride. Another one? For? 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 Evil. Evil. Folly. What's folly? Uh, another one? Check verse 21 up to 23. You? Siski, you spell? And E? Any other one? Eh? Arrogance. Arrogance. Ski at the arrogance. Yeah? How do you spell arrogance? Like that. Another one? Verse. Mephika verse? Mesha. Check. 23. Okay, slander, arrogance, folly. I listen to verse 23. Verse 23 says, All these evils come from inside and make a man, or a woman, or a boy, or a girl, and clean. These ones. Because they come from inside you. See a queen here. They come from the heart. Easy. So, umejiona wapi? Umejiona wapi kwa easy? So, if you are doing, if you are... This one, uh, you've seen yourself in one of these, you know that they are making you unclean before God. And you need to do something. Yeah? You need to do something. Eh? Eh, which one do you, do you want us? There's a conversiousness, an insurtainable craving for what belongs to another one. You need greed. Cindy, uh, another one. There's what's called blasphemy. Called blasphemy, defaming speech directed at either God or man. Pride, the boasting, exalting of oneself. It is an attitude. Most of these things have to do with attitude. Our attitude, yeah? You see, attitude. That's why Jesus, when God sent Samuel to anoint king for Israel, at the home of Jesse, they brought these young, huge guys, built who are in the army. And God said, no, not them. And then God said, Ma, God does not look at the outward appearance. He look at the inside. God looks at the inside. See, vile umeva, akina nangalia ndani. Even if the outside is right, 
hata kama umevaa vizuri hata kama umejipaka mafuta vizuri if the outside is right these things will defile you when they reside inside your heart you can see umejivaa vizuri nje lakini if these things reside in your heart you are defiled that's what the word of god says sindio there you are defiled a rashes patch will not fix the problem of the heart mwana mwai wana mtu ameka nguo kiraka hivi so if you have this alafu ujaribu kufunika na kiraka like this patch it it will not make you that's what the pharisees used to do they used to take in the, in the during that time they used to deal with a lot of wine so they used to have what called wine skin they used to make a container from a wine from a skin and they would put their wine so when jesus came he said you cannot put a new wine in an old wine skin the old wine skin may may choke eh it will snap na wine ni mwagike si ndio yes so you cannot put old wine skin into the new skin into the new wine skin so which one have you seen yourself what are you going to do about them what are you going to do about them a certain man was teaching sunday school and he went to the class and say ask the kids what is my name now come on galia they look at him like this and then they said we don't know but he was their teacher the sunday school teacher because we don't know your name eh we don't know your name why they could not identify with him it meant they could not identify with him the problem with mankind is a problem of the heart according to jeremiah 17 verse 9 this is where the lord looks upon us that's where sin originates and that's the part of man that needs to be changed this is the part of man that needs to be changed this one and the only person who can do that his name is called jc Jesus is the only one who can deal with this. Your friends cannot do come, come to church every Sunday cannot change this. Reading the Bible cannot change this. Singing in the choir cannot change this. Being a leader in the youth cannot change this. Only this person can do the blood that was shed that washes white as snow. And to, today Jesus is saying in Isaiah 18 verse 1 come let us reason together even though your sins as red are red as scarlet he will wash them white as no then you will have a clean heart in fact here i'm not supposed to put anything here I'm supposed to be blank like that as a sign of a clean heart so the question is do you have a defiled heart what are you going to do about it have you truly been born again Have you given your life to Jesus? If not, I want you to look into your heart. You know yourself, but God knows you better. Do you find any of those in your heart? And ask God to do something. He's ready to do it. God, if you tell God something about this thing, he will cleanse it for you. Why don't you bow and just take a moment and speak to God concerning the clean hands that you thought you had yet you are find it is not pleasing before God. Just tell God. I cannot tell God on your behalf, you are the one who can tell me. So speak to God. Ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you and to give you the power to overcome the things that defile it's not food that goes into the stomach that defile the way people want to put it but it is the things that come from our heart that defile us heavenly father we thank you for jesus 
that if he had not come, we would have been in big trouble keeping the, te the commandments and the rules and the regulations and the traditions of men that would not lead us anywhere. But God, you sent Jesus. Because God the Father, you are the one who initiated the plan of salvation. It is God the Son, Jesus, who said, I will go to the cross and carry out that plan. And it is you, God the Holy Spirit, who convict us of all this unclean and things that defile us so that we can be acceptable before God. You are the one who encourages us and reminds us of what Jesus did on the cross on our behalf. Father, this morning we repent of any and defilement in our heart. And we ask you, Jesus, the one who became sin for us so that in you we might become the righteous of God to come into our lives and make us clean again. Father, listen to your children as they speak to you this day. Father, forgive them, cleanse them, and wash them, and make them clean and acceptable before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.